Hey guys, Karma Sculpting back again once again, and this week we're finishing up our Mewtwo project. And again, I apologize for having to split it up into two videos. After all, I try to show as many, if not all, of the steps I take to make these things. Here you can see I was marking out the spaces needed on this XPS foam here, and proceeded to cut it out with my handheld hot wire cutter. After that I decided to give it a complete black coat because I was planning on using a lot of metallic colors and those pop so amazingly over a black base. Now I did have a bit of trouble deciding what type of floor pattern I should go with, so I will admit that this is completely designed by the seat of my pants. As for my color choices, I used silvers, golds, and a little later there's even a little bit of metallic blues, but it really blended in a little too well to the silver pieces, as seen here. It was quick and simple, but I needed it to look a little more dirty. With a mix of watered down grays and browns, I just kind of smeared the top of it to kind of make it look like it had been barely taken care of at best. Not as if it had been abandoned, but as if cleaning was not the priority. With the baseboard complete, it was finally time to start working on Mewtwo's incubator. For this, I used DAS or DOS air dry clay. Using this stuff, I was able to make the shape and not mess with it further, just leaving it so that it could dry out. It didn't have to be perfect, because when this stuff dries completely, it is very easy to sand down. With those reasons out of the way, the other reason why I chose not to use polymer clay for this is because heating it while keeping the exact same dimensions that I need would have been a pain. The same goes for cutting this all out of XPS foam. It would be very easy to cut out the shapes that I need, but it would be incredibly fragile against the heaviness of this resin thing that Mewtwo is wrapped in. For this thing here right at the front, I decided to just throw like a Pokeball in there, just like, hey, yes, this is Pokemon, look closer, it's Mewtwo. The original plan was to turn this Pokeball into a Master Ball, but I'm not going to lie, when I started painting it, I completely forgot about it. Just another thing that you remember while editing. Way to go, Karma. These lines I'm making here are barely visible in the end product, but they were there as guidelines for some glow-in-the-dark paint later on. I'm only mentioning that because there may be some of you out there that want to follow along step by step. And just to be clear, that goes for any of the lines that I carve into this thing. Also, in case it's not shown, anything I do on one side of this, I do it symmetrically as I can on the other side. The top. That was a little trickier than the bottom. Not to mention, a lot more time consuming. I had to make sure that it stayed in place and did not slide down, thanks to the forces of gravity, thank you Newton. But I had to make sure that I covered up all the wires and the battery box on top so that they weren't showing, like, at all. Doing all of that while keeping the clay nice and moist to mold it all together, that was a royal pain as well. But hey! I did it, and in the end, I'm appreciative of the work I put in. For the tippy top of this incubator here, I wanted another Pokeball. So I wrapped a ball of tin foil in polymer clay, shaped it out the best I could, but, and this is a very big but, this is where I realized I was not making it in a week to finish this project. I started to rush, and I didn't give this as much attention as it really deserved. And you may notice that the circles could look better, all of my blending could look better. It's the biggest part of the project that I'm disappointed with. Luckily, if it's that much of an eyesore in the future, this part is removable, so I can fix it for myself at least later. Thus began 
the day-long journey of sanding every inch of this thing down, the mess that this wrecked on my workshop was insane. Big oof. But then it was finally time to take care of that unsightly seam on the edge of Mewtwo's tank. I cut out a thin piece of polymer clay, lined it up just perfectly to cover that up and carved some cracks into it just like the glass of the incubator would appear to be cracking. I imagine this was like a thin support beam between the top and bottom of the incubator. And you may be wondering how I cured this despite it being clasped to the side of resin. What I did is I just took my heat gun to it from a distance until it was nice and hard and I knew it was stuck there perfectly fine. Just like the floors below it, I wanted this thing to have a metallic look, so guess what? Everything was drowned in black paint. And when I say everything, I mean everything. It was a buy one, get all deal. Fun fact, painting is one of my favorite parts of this hobby. I just throw my Raycon earbuds in and I'm jamming out. No, not sponsored, just saying, good product. For some reason, the blue in this metallic blue actually shows on this bottom part of the incubator, but it doesn't show up anywhere else in the video. Maybe I've got to figure out a better lighting situation. Any recommendations? As for the part I've been waiting for, glow-in-the-dark paints. Though I was disappointed that even in the darkness, they don't show up the color of the paint but that wasn't gonna stop me. I filled each and every crevice that I carved into this thing. After realizing that the paint color wasn't going to transfer over to the glow in the dark color, I just stuck with the yellow because between the two, this one glowed just a little bit brighter. If anyone knows where there are some glow-in-the-dark paint or companies that sell something like it that actually transfers the color into a glow-in-the-dark effect, hit me up, really. Because that was kind of a letdown. I still liked it in the end, but that just hurt. You live and learn, I guess. Once I glued it down to the base, I continued the glow-in-the-dark streaks onto the floor and out. To me, it gave the effect that it wasn't just lights coming from the incubator, but instead those were wires with electricity running through them. I definitely used Pokemon logic for that one there. Also, I know some of you might think this looks incredibly tacky, it doesn't look all that great, but trust me when I say that it looks awesome in the dark. I mean, you saw the thumbnail, right? Up close, in the light, yeah, I definitely get that, I see it myself. If you happen to disagree with that statement, you know, feel free to tell me down below, but until then... With that, this project is done. I'm definitely doing something a lot simpler for next video. As for what that might be, stay tuned and find out. Is what I'd like to say, but I'm going to be honest, I have no clue what I'm doing. The new Scarlet and Violet trailer just dropped, so I might do something from that. But in the meantime, here's the thing you've all been waiting for. The light show. Dope, right? This one view right here made it so worth it and earned its honorary spot as my new favorite nightlight. So tell me, what do you think? Be as brutally honest as you want to be in the comment section down below. Something that just came to mind while editing what would you all think to me opening up some TCG packs as the YouTube Shorts? And then from there, take my pick from said pack and say, hey, guess this is what we're building next week. 
that way we can keep it you know kind of fresh kind of random and you guys can maybe pick from those said cards and you guys get to choose what i make i don't know in the end i've got a crazy amount of ideas in my head i just don't have all the time in the world to get to them so one by one it is but i've rambled on enough it's time for me to get on out of here Mewtwo and Karma Sculpting out. Peace.